Welcome back to Ray's Garage. I'm Ray Cornelia. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all. This is your 1970 Nova December update. It's been a little chilly in the shop, about 40s to 50s. Uh, to us California boys, that's a little chilly, but I know for a lot of you out there, it's a lot colder. And as many of you know, I don't have heat or cooling in my shop, so I just put a hat on, a sweatshirt, and go to work. Anyway, uh, I made some headway over the last couple of weeks, and I think the best thing to do is start at the front of the car, work our way back, um, give you a good idea of where we're at with this uh, project. I'm handheld now, so uh, let's try to keep the shakiness out of this the best I can. Okay, as you can see, I got some parts bolted on the OER subframe. Uh, if, you list, if you missed the last episode, uh, this is an original equipment remanufacture uh, subframe. Uh, this fits the Nova, the Camaro, the Firebirds. They're all exactly the same. It's a reinforced uh, center section, a little better quality than what the factory was. So I got the Ride Tech uh, front and lower control arms, the Ride Tech um, coilover shocks. These are 12.19 uh, inch rotors. Uh, and these are six piston uh, front calipers. And I have the True Turn, the Ride Tech True Turn uh, steering system. Uh, it's a little bit of an upgrade. It helps with bump steer uh, when you're cornering and areas like that. If I was to ever like autocross it, uh, it just steers better. It's a better platform. Um, I got the brand new Borgensen 12.7 to 1 power steering box. And I'm doing away with the rag joint and going with a, a U joint <clears throat> for some additional clearance. Remember, I'm putting a big block in here. So uh, I want to talk a little bit more about this true turn system and something I discovered which I was not aware of. With the true turn system, you cannot run full length uh, tube headers. You have to run a mid or a shorty uh, because of this system. I believe there is a company out there that will custom make you a set, but I'm not ready to dish out that kind of money. So anyway, um, and I'll show you the headers that I ended up choosing, which you probably saw in the opening. Uh, did some work on the firewall here, got, got it mostly stripped down. I am not going to get crazy with the body work on this. Uh, I just want to clean it up and I do want to paint it the color of the car. Uh, this area here is going to need to get closed in because I'm going with the vintage air, uh, AC and heating unit. So there's a better shot of that firewall. You see I got it pretty much stripped down. Got a little bit more prep work to do. Uh, there are some holes I want to fill in, little holes that aren't necessary anymore. I would like to add that the Ride Tech spindles, that's a two inch drop spindle. So it's two inches lower than factory. And that's exactly what I'm looking for, for the perfect ride height to match the rear. I still have to install the sway bar. Just waiting a little bit on that. I do have all the pieces for that. Um, it's a quick, easy install. No big deal there. Here's the G-Force 4L80E reinforced cross member um, trial fit in. Grade 8 hardware. Um, that's really going to help tie in the back of this subframe. Um, I mentioned this before. I do have subframe connectors from Ride Tech. That's going to be one of the last things that go in. Here's a shot of the inside of the car. I moved the um, bench seat back two inches with a set of um, quarter inch blocks, basically to relocate it from where it was. I was just too tight in the car. So as you see here, um, I have a Sheldon machine uh, riser for my uh, B&M Pro Stick. That way I'm not having to reach for it. Um, it's just sitting in the car right now. I got to thank my buddy Philip for uh, powder. Uh, no, he ceramic coated it and etched the, uh, the Radical Nova, Roadkill Nova, whatever you want to call it, into the base. Uh, you see I have the dash pulled out and I'll explain why here in a minute. I also got the rear seat modified. I had a, a shorten it two and a half, I'm sorry, two and a quarter inches uh, on each side, on the back and on the bottom. 
And so now I got a back seat in there with those big old wheel tubs. Uh, the only problem is I don't have much leg room here, which it doesn't matter. I don't think anyone's going to be riding in the back of this bad boy anyway. So got that done. Uh, that was a little bit of an experience. I never did upholstery work before. Um, I had to cut and re-weld some wires. Let's see if I can move this to the... There's that area there. Pretty sure. Re-weld some of the uh, seat wires, and then I just pulled the uh, upholstery up tight against the, the shortened uh, framework, and bam, went right in. Here's a shot of that front relocation bracket. There's uh, two in the front and one in the back, and what it basically does is just takes the factory mounting point and moves it back two inches. Very simple to make, quarter inch plate. Uh, I'm going to take all this out and clean it up. That rust doesn't look good on a nice clean part, so that's going to get redone. I uh, don't think I can get a shot of the back one because it's up under the seat. But anyway, a uh, real easy way to give yourself two inches more leg room. Uh, whoa! There goes the light. Sorry about that. Um, here's another shot of the uh, Sheldon machine uh, riser. They make these in three and a half, five inch, uh, you know, several heights. So the three and a half worked out perfect for me. Um, perfect height. Uh, it's just sitting on the carpet right now. Uh, I want to wait to bolt it down. And one thing I really like about these risers, you can either run the cable. Let me get the light back on. You could run your shift cable straight out the front, or you can loop it and go back down and come out the back side if you wanted to. Up to you. Uh, I like the freedom. Uh, with things don't line up, you can always change gears on them. So there's the factory dash I pulled out. Um, I mentioned this before, but everything worked in this dash. I actually had it out one time before and replaced all the bulbs. Uh, the radio works, everything works. But instead, I'm going to go with this auto meter set up. Uh, they make a bezel dash that basically bolts right into the factory position. And uh, I ended up going with the, uh, the uh, carbon fiber auto meter gauges. Um, and these are going to populate this bezel, of course. I may put a couple more gauges here, like trans temp or something, but we'll see. Okay, as you can see, I went with the Sanderson uh, mid-length headers. Uh, these are inch and seven-eighths tubes to a three-inch collector. Um, one thing about these headers is pretty unique. Uh, you don't use a gasket on the head. Uh, they make a machined surface here that's flattened or machined, and you just put uh, Ultra Black on it, let it harden overnight, and bolt it up for a, uh, a perfect seal, right? Uh, went with the copper collector gaskets. Uh, these are from Sanderson. They have the same uh, coating that the header does. I went with the uh, silver ceramic coating. Um, of course, there's a break-in procedure for them. Pretty nice set of headers. Uh, I wasn't real happy to go mid-length, but uh, it might work out better in the long run because, as many of you know, mid-length headers create better torque at lower RPMs. Uh, the full-length header tubes... If I was racing this thing, well, yeah, then it'll make a difference. But uh, these are the bad boys going on my big block Chevy. The Sanderson headers came from Century Performance. Uh, they're Sanderson's distributor for these headers. So here's a big change from last time. I wasn't happy with the size of the previous 17-inch uh, wheel and tire combination. So I went with... Um, 18 by 11 inch wide torque thrust twos with a 31540 ZR18 tire. It's a little over 28 inches in diameter and it fills that wheel well up much nicer. Uh, put the car up and give you a better shot. So like I said, it's a 28 inch in diameter tire and it's about 13 inches wide. Um, they sure look nice on the back of the car. They fill, fill in very well. Um, the other ones just left me too much gap uh, between the car and the tire. So these fill that in very nice. I'm very happy with it. These uh, will also tuck way up into those uh, wheel tubs. Um, so uh, tire and wheel combination for the rear is done. I mentioned in the previous video, um, 
I'm going with WeatherTech connectors throughout the car. Uh, great sealing, they're easy to use. I bought the uh, crimper tool and I also am using the Alex coating on all the wires. I still have to make a bracket for my uh, T brake line connections right here. Uh, I'm going to make a little bracket that comes off here and just uh, weld it on. I hope you enjoyed this update and I'd like to thank you for coming along this awesome adventure with me. I'd like to also thank you for all your comments, your thumbs up, and don't forget to click that notification bell. So until next time, see ya. Somebody bring me a beer.